You know, I suspect that you probably have flow in other things, like if you're baking, or if you have a hobby, or if you're cleaning your closet. You know, you hate cleaning your closet, you can't really get to do it, and then once, I don't know, some people, once they start, you know, just kind of get into it, and you lose track of time. Um, but flow is a term that goes with social media. Um, and the last thing is social steganography. Now that would be a new word for me. So that is hidden meaning in a message that exists in plain sight this is so cool. By leveraging shared knowledge and cues embedded in particular social contexts. So really all that means is you and I had a conversation in school today and I go home and I post stuff and you know what I'm talking about and maybe one or two other people and nobody else has any idea what I'm talking about. So I can say things that are questionable or nasty or relate to something and there's a whole lot of people in the dark but certain people know what I'm talking about. And when we, as adults, are stalking our kids, there's a lot of social steganography out there. So Pig Latin is an example of steganography, which is, it's right in plain sight, and you can listen to me. I can't speak gibberish, nor can I speak Pig Latin, but if I could, and you understood it, you and I would be good, and the other people wouldn't know what we were talking about, and that's what kids are doing. So if you're gonna stalk them, that's fine, but they're not gonna communicate to the people in their networked public in a way that you understand what they're saying. And if you think you understand what they're saying, and then you respond to what they've written, now you've totally you know, embarrassed them, and you're the worst ever, and how could you comment, and you've kind of destroyed it. And one of the things that um, Dana Boyd talks about in her book is when I am um, talking, when I'm putting a message out and it's meant for you, I want my mother or my aunt or my sister to know who it's meant for and just to have common sense. Like, you shouldn't barge into my conversation because you should know that the comment that I'm making isn't about you and you don't need to comment on it. So there's a social media etiquette that kids are expecting all of us to have. <laughs> we don't have it because we live in a different world and we have different judgment. So imagine if you were so we used to hang out at the Scoby Diner in Little Neck, uh, where I grew up. And if an adult, a parent, sat down at our table, or a security guard walked over to our table, we might, you know, stop our conversation, and, or we might change the subject. Kids are hanging out at their Scoby Diner, which is Instagram, Twitter, and all of these other social media sites. That's their community. And they can't just exactly turn it to a whisper, and they can't exactly stop talking when somebody comes along because it's, it's written down. And social media is an extension of their, public, of their world. So why do your kids go to um, a sporting event or go to a concert? What's the first thing they do when they come home or before they get home? What do they do? Right, they're on their phones, they're sending pictures. Why are they uploading pictures? Because they're now going to extend their social experience online for another hour, for another three days. Because what do you want when you're a kid? You, I mean, hopefully you're a kid and you want to be social and you want to hang out with your friends and you want to spend as much time with your friends as you possibly can. And this is a way to do it. And it's not just the culture of narcissism and it's not just that it's all about them, but this is, this is how it is in the same way that you know, a lot of us, well, some people in this room might have snuck out of their homes without their parents' knowledge when they were younger, and other people might have taken a parent's car. You know, like, things happen. And uh, this is kind of their way of doing some of that stuff. Okay, 7.30, moving right along. Okay, so why are kids spending so much time online? I've already touched on some of this, but I'm just gonna zip through these. So most kids use social media to connect with people in their communities. And uh, I spoke to Mr. Carlson earlier today, and you know, I said to him, what's one of the things that you'd like me to communicate to parents tonight? And he said, I want you to communicate that more than 90% of the things that kids are doing online are productive, are positive, are social, are not destructive, are not dangerous. A lot of it's just, you know, hi, hi, how's your day, what's up, right? It's a whole lot of nothing, a lot of it. 
and, you know, and some of it's about making plans, and some of it's about complaining about parents, and some of it's about, you know, this teacher was terrible today, or I can't believe how hard this exam was, or did you see this, or retweeting, or, you know, reposting, or, you know, I'm out of vocabulary. So, um, <laughs> that's what they're doing. They're, a lot of them are really connecting with people that they know, because that's what teenagers want to do. They want to belong, and they want to be in a sense of community. It's normal and expected. So it's no longer like the fringy kids who are using it. This is normal. You go to a distinguished Apple school, right? This is their world. And, and they're being taught how to, uh, taught, whatever. They are um, sort of instinctively, it's like part of their DNA. And not so much for the rest of us. Like we really had to learn. Like, Every time I sit down to write a PowerPoint presentation, I feel like I have to reinvent the wheel. How do I get the footer to come on every slide? You know, the kids just, you know, they know. So I call them and, and they sometimes are able to help me figure out what I need to do. Um, so I said this, they post pictures and videos to continue hanging out after they've gone home and you're not literally hanging out anymore. And you know, Florida's kind of cool because you get your license, a lot of kids, when they're 16. So they have mobility many of them much younger than in New York, for example, where it's 17, or in places where, you know, for whatever reason, kids, or, and there's no public transportation in Florida. But mobility is a big issue, and if you have parents that work and you can't get places, this is the perfect solution for kids who are stuck at home and they want to be social and they want to have a life, and they really can. You know, and I have kids who I see because I'm a psychologist and I see some kids who struggle socially and they'll, they'll have legitimate friends who live all over the world and so they want to be online at odd hours because their friends in New Zealand and Australia and on the other side of the world are up and they have real relationships with, with them. Um, and it's, you know, it's pretty important. It's, a, it's, it's kind of a wonderful thing when maybe you're not connecting with kids in your school, but you can find a community of people to connect with. And, you know, I'm always sort of skeptical about that. And, and I'm thinking, well, I want you to have, you know, friends in RL, right, friends in real life. But the truth is, sometimes you can't find friends that go to your school. And how cool is it that now they can look beyond? And a lot of the people they find are legit. <laughs> and they really are the age that they say that they are, and it's not all bad stuff, and, and I'm not, I don't wanna be Pollyanna-ish, or think that everything that kids do online is safe, or that they have good judgment, because smart kids do really stupid things sometimes, but I want you to leave here tonight, hopefully, being a little bit less frightened, and knowing that some of what they're doing is just really normal. Okay, so the teen's perspective. Social media gives them a place to hang out and socialize, to share information, to stalk famous people, to gossip. Um, and they want to do it all without feeling like the adults, their teachers, or their parents are breathing down their necks. They want to hang out with friends where they want and when they want without adult supervision, and they sometimes want to do it in public places, right? So the mall, the skating rink, those are public places years ago before all of our times, like a sock hop or, you know, I guess pep rally still happened. Those were where people hung out, but, or a park. Like, I used to hang out at Allenwood Park all the time. Well, you can't hang out at any of those places anymore because you can't loiter. And, you know, you can't pull and the police will send you home because, uh, you know, there's a sort of a worldwide concern of kids hanging out and there's concerns about gangs and there have been all of these prohibitions against kids hanging out. And what do kids want to do? Hang out, and sometimes they don't want to do it at your house. They want to do it in public. So if they can't actually get to the mall, or they can't, like, where are they going to go? So this is a new kind of public for them to hang out in. Okay. It's hard to keep up socially if you're not online. How are you supposed to know where the party is? How do you know that we're all wearing blue shirts tomorrow? You know, like, you don't want to be left out of anything. Um, the other thing is, if Everyone might not hang out on the same sites and apps. So for example, maybe you have a Facebook page because you have to keep in touch with your relatives, but you talk to your friends on Twitter, and then you have this weird interest that nobody else really understands, and so you have a Tumblr page where you know, your interest in, I don't know, fire ants is explored, and then all the other people out there who are interested in fire ants you know, join you on there. So you know, there may be multiple sites where people are doing different things. Um, let them hang out and be cool even if there's nobody to drive them. 
Okay, so I talked, I interviewed some kids in preparation for talking with you tonight, so this is what I got. On Tumblr, I follow blogs and stuff I like, but I don't know or care about the people. Okay, that's Tumblr. Also on Tumblr, if I see someone's blog I like, I will follow them. So I was introduced to Tumblr this week, which was very exciting for me, and I did a little searching, and I liked the thing, and now, I don't know, now I'm not really literate, but I'm there. Um, I don't know most of the people, I, like, so one of the things I was concerned about is, if these are anonymous, so I, so I want to sort of look, uh, on Facebook you can always go to about and see who the, or try to see who the people are, so I wanted to know on Tumblr, can I do that? So is it anonymous, isn't it anonymous, what does anonymous mean, and how can I find people? So the bottom line is on most of these sites, you can certainly post whatever you want which means that if you decide to post your contact information, well, there it is. And you can message people on a lot of the sites, and you can have, I know on Twitter, you can have a private conversation with somebody, and so a lot of it really comes down to judgment, and that's where, that's where the adults are gonna come in, is helping the kids have some judgment. So you can message people on Tumblr and get support. The people I follow on Twitter, I know and like, even if I don't know them personally. So Twitter, you're gonna also follow famous people. Snapchat, these were her little tidbits for me. Everyone uses Snapchat. Instagram and Twitter can be public or private, and Facebook is only for relatives. Okay, so here's another interesting fact. In real life, if you wanna make things public, you have to work hard to make things public. Right? If I want to get the word out about something, i got to pay for it, I've got to find a soapbox, I've got to take out an ad, I've got to get on television, on social media, on the other, and so it takes effort. Right? Things are private by default in real life, public by effort. And social media is the opposite. Social media is public by default, private by effort. And because kids aren't often thinking about the long-term consequences of things, they're only thinking about how they feel in the moment, and they don't care who reads some of what they post in the moment. So it's an, it's an interesting thing to think about, because I don't, because like kids are, they care about public, but who they think is actually their audience at any given time may or may not be. So if I post something, and I'm really hoping that you're gonna see it, but you may not see it, because you know, maybe my stuff, my stuff isn't going to come up on your feed, right? I don't really want you to see it, but my stuff happened to come up on your feed, or you happen to have checked my stuff, and you know, now I'm in trouble. And so who kids imagine 